What is God's name? And no, it's not God. This is Project Truth Beam. And if you are looking for truth, you have come to the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about what is God's name. So some of y'all might be wondering, I thought God's name was God. That's what we call him, right? Well, actually, he has a name. The King James Bible, it has Jehovah seven times. Every place that you see Lord in all caps in your English Bible, thanks to the King James Version, that is a reference back to God's name. So why is it that we hear Yahweh being God's name? And why don't the Jewish people believe that Yahweh is God's name? So where do we get Yahweh? Why is it that only in the Western academic world they refer to God's name as Yahweh? Have you ever asked yourself, what is God's name? And if you do, and you think that it's Yahweh, have you ever asked yourself, how do I know that it's Yahweh? What is the evidence that is Yahweh? We are going to explore all these questions. As you can see from the title, we are going to show you why God's name is not Yahweh. All of Western academia traces their reasoning for using the name Yahweh back to this man, Wilhelm Gesenius. He lived from 1786 to 1842. Here's a quote from Britannica on Gesenius's career. Quote, German biblical critic and important figure in Hebrew and other Semitic language studies. He was a pioneer of critical Hebrew lexicography and grammar. He also published a dictionary. A lot of what he did is very important to how we understand biblical Hebrew words today. Let's look into what Gesenius has to say. Gesenius brings two sources, Theodore of Cyrus from 500 AD, who stated that it was Yahweh, and a listing of names for God that came from the Middle East. And he particularly singled out the Samaritans. Gesenius put this in his dictionary in 1833. He admitted to choosing the Samaritan version of the name of God. He also declared that it was connected back to the Egyptians. He was pointing out that there must have been a group of Israelites in the land of Egypt that took it to the Samaritan region and also a group of people that worship Jupiter in Greece that got the same name from the Egyptians. And he relied all that on there possibly being a future discovery in Egypt. Now, at that time, there was very little research done in Egypt. People were still trying to figure out things and they could not read hieroglyphics. So people could say anything they wanted to about Egypt. And hopefully in the future, they would be correct. In this case, we never found anything like that in Egypt. So Yesenius was incorrect about that. But however, his linking to Jupiter and the name Yahweh is very key to this teaching. Now let's look at Josephus of Antiquities. In his book 12, chapter 5, section 5, he discusses the Samaritans. Now, the Samaritans were Sidonians and other people that were brought into the land to live in the land of Israel. They were not Jewish people, however, because of their situation with lions attacking them and wild beasts attacking them, they assumed the worship of the God of the land. So they ended up practicing Judaism. However, their version of the Torah is a little different. They had a temple at the mountain called Gerizim. This is being the Samaritans. Though without a name, Anomia, that's where we get the word anonymous. Let our temple, which at present has no name. So they were worshiping a God with no name at that moment at all. Be named the Temple Jupiter. Hellenius. So in this case, the Romans 
were marching in and the Samaritans were declaring that we're different. We're not like the Jews and we don't want to be killed. This temple that we worship God at, who has no name, let's just change him to Jupiter. So that way the Romans won't come and get us. So they have this on record that they started using Jupiter as the name of their god at the Mount Gerizim. Now remember, Gesenius is the one who draws the connection to the Samaritans and Jupiter and the god Yahweh. The name the Samaritans used for the god Jupiter was Yoepiter. And the short form was Yahweh. Pitor is father. And Yoepiter is Father Yahweh. The O in that word was also pronounced as an ah sound, depending on the dialect. There is your proof that Yahweh is actually Jupiter that was worshipped at Mount Gerizim by the Samaritans. And Gesenius is sourcing that, thinking that is the God of the Bible. As of December of 2020, there has been zero Old Testament manuscripts with the name of God recorded as Yahweh. As of December 31st, 2020, total count is 2,441 manuscripts with the name of the God, Yehovah. Some of those manuscripts have his name on every page. Sometimes those manuscripts only have his name in it one time. Now let's look at Exodus and get some clarity on what is actually being said and how can we prove that it is Yehovah. And God said to Moses, a yeah, a share, a yeah, I will be that which I will be. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, a yeah, I will be, has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, you, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Yehovah, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Now let's learn some Hebrew. Let's look at Yehovah in the Hebrew. I want everybody to study this image, memorize it, because we're going to look for it in some manuscripts in the end of this video. First thing you have to learn is the consonants. That is yod He vav He. Y H V H. And then the vowels is E O A. And those vowels are Shva, Cholam, that's a ch sound, and Kamatz. Yehovah is in the Old Testament 6,827 times. Yehovah derives from the roots of three words. Most Hebrew words are derived of other words put together. In the case of Yehovah, it's Haya, Hove, and Yihayi. These words mean he was, he is, and he will be. That is to say, he has always existed. He exists now, and he will exist in the future. But you might be asking, why do we see Jehovah? Why is it that we see a J? That's a good question. This is because of the English. Languages change over time, and the English has done a change in the sound of its Y. In some words, they have adopted a J sound. Now let's look at the history of when the J came into play. Gian Giorgio Tresino was the first to use the letter J. In Tresino's epistle, about the letters recently added to the Italian language in 1524. The letter J was a different shape for the letter I. It was not a different sound, it was just a different shape. From the Latin, the letter J was adopted by the Old French, and then the English scribes picked it up. The I and the J for the English was not distinct until 1633, in the first English language book. Because of 1633 that they started officially using the letter J, that is why you don't see the letter J in the 1611 King James Version. Let's look in the Bible where we see God's name being commanded to be used. 
Psalms 118, verse 26, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yehovah. Psalms 91, verse 14, because he has sent his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am Yehovah, that is my name. Psalms 113, verse 1 and 3. Praise Yehovah. Yehovah's name is to be praised. Deuteronomy 613. And shall take oaths in his name. Now let's look at Jesus, Yeshua in the Hebrew, saying God's name. Matthew 23, verse 39, For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jehovah. John 17, 26, And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Now remember what God's name means. Here we can see it again in Revelations 1.8. This is Jesus talking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now let's look at the King James 16.11. Remember, I said that the J was not created until 1633 in the English. Here you have James, King James, being described as Prince James. Here you can see the cover page of the Old Testament for the 1611 version. And look, notice at the top, you have Yehovah, but you're missing the Cholam. You're missing one vowel. The page kind of cuts it off. Now look at the New Testament cover page. Notice at the top, we also have Yehovah. We have the missing vowel, and we can say the name. It is Yehovah. The authors of the King James 1611, they knew God's name, and they knew it in the Hebrew. Also notice Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Notice there is no J. Now I want to show the viewers for themselves manuscripts that show Yehovah. So you have seen it for yourself. Here is the Aleppo Codex. This is 1 Kings 8, verse 11. Here is the Leningrad Codex, and this is Genesis. And here is the Crown Damascus. Here is the Oriental 9880 in the National British Library. And that concludes our teaching on why God's name is not Yahweh. I really appreciate all y'all out there checking out this video. And there is a movement to restore God's name. Please join the movement to restore God's holy name so that we can pray in his name and use his name. If you have been using other names, do not fret. God knows your heart and he will look deep inside your heart. I hope this teaching has been a blessing to you. And may Yehovah bless you.